Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the February 22nd, 2005 Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. The first item of, on the agenda this evening actually should have been the last item of our December meeting, and that is the election of officers uh, for the board. We did not have a December meeting nor a January meeting, so if the audience will bear with us while we take care of a little housekeeping, board housekeeping. I've had an opportunity to speak with each one of the board members, uh, of which six are present. I guess we should take roll call as part of the prior to election of officers. I will do that first. Uh, please introduce yourself starting with, on the right. Uh, my name is Steve LaPlante. Len Delino. Gib Mendelson, Jay Chatmus, and Joe Goyametti. I understand that James Walsh will not be in attendance this evening. So we have six of the seven board members present, uh, which constitutes a quorum. As I was saying, uh, I've had an opportunity to speak with each one of the board members regarding uh, election of our two officers. Uh, that of chairman and that of secretary, and I've encouraged each board member to, to uh, uh, as I did at the October meeting, to uh, uh, if they are interested in the position, to uh, certainly make themselves available for uh, those two offices, and, and I feel sure that each board member has done that. Uh, the first item is uh, election of chairman. Uh, uh, each officer is elected for one-year terms with, according to the rules and regulations, with a maximum of two terms. Uh, at present, I am eligible for re-election, as I do believe our Secretary Gib Mendelson is also for re-election, uh, as is any member of the board. Uh, with that brief background, uh, I'll take nominations for chairman. I move the nomination of Jay Chatmus, our current chairman, is again for another full term as chairman of the board of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. Second that. Any comments? All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you, gentlemen. Next item is election of secretary. Uh, may I have a nomination for election of secretary? Uh, nominate Gib Mendelson. I would like to second that. Any comments? All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Now back to our regular agenda. The first item is approval, review of the minutes of the October 26, 2004 meeting. Uh, of those, and I believe we had uh, uh, of those members who were present at that meeting, and we had a, uh, all seven members were present at that. Uh, do we have any comments regarding the, the uh, October 26th meeting? <clears throat> no comments. I reviewed the meeting uh, minutes and uh, they seemed fine, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Laurie Flanza for doing such a good job with our minutes. All those in favor of approving the October 26 meeting minutes, please raise your hand. All opposed? Seeing none, thank you. The first item, there is no old business uh, other than the old new election of officers. The first item of new business, uh, new business on this evening's agenda, is to hear the request of William Turner and Ursus Strong of 18 Smugglers Cove Road, tax map U10, lot 42, to replace and enlarge existing dwelling within 75 feet of the high water line of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, I'd like to give just a brief overview uh, for the benefit of those in the audience and those at home regarding what we are faced with this evening. Uh, 
This is a review of the application. This is not an application for appeal. Uh, our zoning ordinance states that uh, construction within the Shoreland Performance Overlay District may be performed if certain uh, uh, specifications are met. Uh, as a little bit of background, the state of Maine and, and Cape Elizabeth both uh, have defined the Shoreland Performance Overlay District as a 250-foot uh, setback, setback boundary from the main high water mark of the Atlantic Ocean in this case. Within that 250 feet, uh, the ordinance in the state of Maine regulate what can and cannot be done within that setback. Of that 250 uh, feet, the first 75 feet is regulated quite uh, more stringently as to what type of construction and what can be done and tree clearing and so forth within that area. Uh, because of that, we are obliged to review any application for construction within that 75 feet. Uh, there are primarily two items that trigger a re review by the board, and that is uh, an enlargement of more than 50 uh, 30% 30, uh, 30 enlargement of the square feet or 30% enlargement of the volume of the construction. And the second item is uh, a reconstruction cost exceeding 50% of the existing uh, structure. Um, it's the second item, the uh, reconstruction cost, that is triggering a review by the zoning board this evening. So I just want to make it clear that this is not an application for a variance. This is a review triggered by uh, the 50% construction cost. Because we are reviewing the application based on one item, we are obliged to review it on all items. So we will uh, be taking a close look at all aspects of the construction uh, uh, based on the uh, cost factor as to why we are reviewing that this evening. With that brief background, uh, will uh, the applicants or their representative please come to the podium, introduce yourself, please state your name and address and present the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, my name is John Mitchell of Mitchell & Associates and I represent uh, Cursus Strong and William Turner, who are unfortunately uh, were not able to attend this evening. They uh, had to attend to some health uh, issues with their family. Graham Pillsbury um, is the project manager um, for this, for this uh, proposed house relocation. Um, did you, I'm sorry, did you state your address? My uh, business address is 70, Mitchell and Associates, 70 Center Street. Portland, Maine. Thank you. Uh, the property is located at 18 Smugglers Cove Road, which is basically um, next to the last house on a dead end street. Uh, it is located in the RA district as well as the RP3 F zone. Uh, the property is a 14,260 square foot lot uh, located on a private way. Smugglers Cove uh, actually terminates in this location here with a cul-de-sac and this is a private way which accesses this property as well as um, the property to the east and to the south. The um, area designated in brown uh, consists of the existing residents. The areas in yellow consists of the areas of expansion. This area here is the 75-foot setback, which, as you can see, diagonally goes through the property, goes through um, a portion of the house and a portion of the existing garage. Uh, there are two areas um, I've indicated. This is the existing leach field, and this is a, an alternative leach field location. <coughs> um, we have a 25-foot setback on the side, a 20-foot setback on the front, and this is the 75-foot setback. 
So this basically, this triangular space is the existing building, or it's the building envelope. Um, before I get too far, I, I want to uh, point to two corrections on our application, if I would, if I could. Uh, on page two of the application, under existing floor area or portion of the structure within 75 feet of the normal high water, uh, the percent increase should be 19.2 rather than 16.1. And under the following paragraph, existing volume of portion of structure, the percent increase should be 26.7 rather than versus 21.1. I apologize for that uh, error. Uh, on that same page, uh, with regard to the percent of lot covered by impervious surfaces, uh, we, act, we actually have a decrease in percentage from 22.2 to 21.9. What we did, uh, because we're adding impervious surface in this location and in this location, we deducted um, the area from the driveway. Uh, currently, there's a uh, two-car garage with a concrete paved driveway. We've taken a, uh, a fair amount of concrete away, and we're proposing to install cobblestone um, treads um, with grass in between. And that gave us the additional uh, impervious surface so that they could be applied to the, the residents. Uh, in terms of the existing floor area ratio, um, as I said, we've got a 19.2% increase, which is uh, uh, far under the 30% maximum allowed. And then under the existing volume, uh, we've got a 26.7 increase, uh, which is under the 30% allowable um, for volume. And these, these numbers were taken from, we, we, uh, we researched the files uh, uh, Ken Curtis used to live in this residence. He did uh, a certain amount of improvements added to the square footage as well as the volume. We used those numbers from, from sort of the starting point. Um, on the following page, uh, it is, we are asked to justify why the, the replacement should be granted. And on exhibit A in your package, uh, we've provided a narrative for each one of these uh, six items, I believe. And I'll just go through them briefly. Uh, the size of the lot, uh, it is a, as you can see, it's a relatively small lot, uh, 14,000 square feet or a third of an acre. Uh, it has a very small building envelope, um, as I outlined. Uh, and if we were to move um, th this is going to be a tear down and they're going to replace the structure on its foundation. If we were to mo re relocate this structure once it's torn down to this building envelope, it is going to impact on uh, the neighborhood views uh, as well as the, um, the alternative septic system uh, in this, on this lot as well as slope and as well as on the immediate abutter to the west, uh, Miss Osborne. And all of these things I'll get, I'll get into as I, as I proceed. Uh, the next item is the slope of the land. Uh, we have a 33% slope here. We have a 17% slope over here. Um, as, it, as it stands with the replacement of this structure, we're really going to, we're minimally going to impact the existing slope. Uh, this is this is very flat at the entrance, and the only uh, disturbance will be uh, for the addition of the garage on the side of the garage. So uh, it's obvious that if we were to relocate, there'd be a much greater disturbance on, on the existing slopes. Uh, the same with the soil erosion. Uh, the only soil disturbance, uh, as proposed, will be in this location, in this location, 
As part of um, our application, we presented an exhibit on soil uh, erosion and sedimentation control, which will be, uh, become part of this contract once this is, is developed. Location of other structures on the property and the adjacent properties, there, there are no other structures on this property. Um, and as you can see, the adjacent structures, uh, Ms. Osborne's structure is 10 feet from the property line. Uh, there's a structure across the street, and this is Mr. Toy's property, uh, which is at the, the end of Smuggler's Cove. <clears throat> uh, so if we were to relocate this structure within this building envelope, uh, the impacts to Ms. Osborne as well as all of the other neighbors um, along the uh, northerly side of Smuggler's Cove will be impacted in terms of their views. The septic system, uh, there's, as I mentioned, there's an existing septic system here. Uh, we have uh, had Al Frick go out and do some test pits to determine an alternative septic system on this property. Um, the one that he found is located here, half within the, the building envelope and half out. Um, but if we were, had to move this house uh, within the building envelope, it would impact on that alternative uh, septic system. And the soil logs are in your packet. Uh, impact on the views. Uh, Smuggler's Cove is a fairly unique residential subdivision in that I hope you can all see this. Um, the, the houses along the northerly side of Smuggler's Cove, out their back window, all have a view corridor uh, towards the ocean. Um, and I've designated this in this dashed line. Also, there's a copy in your package. Um, the addition, the eight foot addition to the side of the garage the only person that this is going to impact on the, in, with regard to the views is Miss Osborne um, out of this side of the, her house looking in this direction here. However, it's a very tiny triangular um, uh, space that will be, uh, that will block part of her existing views. Uh, no other neighbor along Smuggler's Cove will be impacted uh, as a result of this uh, expansion. <clears throat> uh, and again, if this building were to be constructed in the building envelope, it would significantly impact uh, the neighborhood views. And finally, uh, the vegetation. Uh, there's one small tree, a crab apple tree, that will have to be removed or transplanted uh, as a result of the addition. If we had to move the house, all three trees would be uh, removed. So um, hopefully this, this demonstrates that um, really it is not a feasible alternative to relocate this structure um, outside of the 75-foot setback. And hopefully we've demonstrated that the impacts would be far greater if, if we had to. Thank you. John, you mentioned this is a complete teardown situation? Yes, it is. Taking it down to the foundation? Down to the foundation. Foundation's in good, good condition. Um, you know, the only expansion of the foundation is going to be in this area outside the 75-foot setback as well as this area here. What's the impact going to be on the um, neighbor across the street's view? Uh, currently, this neighbor does not have views uh, you know he, he's looking he, he has views in this direction here which which will not be altered he does not have views over this house to the water how about the neighbor to the left uh, no it will be across the street actually the first neighbor that you were just speaking of oh this one Yep, and there's another one to the left of where your finger is currently. Yes. It's also designated as a view corridor, too. That's Mr. Hanley, uh, who is here this evening. And that, that view, 
he currently does not have any water views through this little slot his views will be the height of this building is going to be expanded and that's with the impact of his view will be the height of the building and the eight foot extension to the left will also impact his view will it not yes it will but not of the water how high is the what's the increase in the height of the building where I think a couple two feet under the 35 feet allowable what what's the current height it's a two-story it's a like a I don't know that you call it a one and a half or two story it's got a second story to it Cape Cod style so it'll be 35 feet it'll be 35 feet high you said two feet shy of 35 feet 35 is the max shy of 35 yeah we didn't match up that's the existing is the second floor going to be livable space yes it is and the whole construction is only 2100 square feet as completed the application maybe I read it wrong I thought it said 21 going from total square footage 2059.8 square feet Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to comment on your application. I thought it was very lucid uh, to read through. Uh, the existing structure on uh, my drive by looked like a, I'd call it a two story home. And the replacement structure, the question I had was the area over the entrance and the peaked rope over the garage look like they're going to be the tallest structures. Are they, those are the elements that are going to be under 35 feet? Is that? Yes. Everything's going to be under 35 feet. Mr. Mitchell, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I'm glad you passed out this elevation profile. Typically, we're used to seeing elevation profiles from all four sides. Uh, do you have plans that you can show us? And this is, it's the same as this. Same as this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, do, do you have an idea as to the height of the roof ridge and the height? Of, uh, is the garage peak the same as the main house roof ridge height at it's the proposed garage you you're the contractor i guess uh, construction sorry construction manager okay uh, we'll address these questions to mr mitchell okay. since he's at the podium at this time and we'll uh, question you further if you're if we need that at this time uh do you know the height of, of the structure mr the whole structure yeah the, Overall, can you give us a, a just an idea as to the length, east to west length, and the height, if you would, just for the so that we can have a feel for the size of the structure. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, your, your question is the height of this? Uh, of the roof ridge, the primary roof ridge, or the highest roof ridge, I guess, to the left of the uh, observation. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a scale. Just, just an estimate. Is, is this 35, 40, 45 feet? Uh, I do know that this architect scale, it would be helpful, yeah. Um, 
I, I don't want exact measurements. We just want a, a feel for the scope of, of the construction is what I'd like at this time. Yeah. Uh, length, width, uh, and typically we, 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 we have a, a, a floor plan, uh, uh, not a floor plan, a construction footprint uh, that, that will give us a, a, an idea of the scope, is, I guess is what we're asking for, or I'm asking for. Mr. Chair, just a question also. How does the, um, where the building is on such a sloping lot, how does the rear, which is as it slopes to the rear, how does that affect the, total, the structure total overall height? Mr. Um, Smith can answer this in detail. It has to do with the well, original yeah. average grade. I think right. for the, in the context of what the board is looking at, where there's two different animals, the height for, for, for 35 feet as measured to the mean level and the average original grade is really something that, that the, the code officer will look at to make sure it meets. Mm -hmm. As far as the board's challenge here, it's to find out whether the height to the very top will interfere with somebody's Im or impact views from what was there and what's going to be proposed. So I don't think it really makes any difference other than Okay. Just so looks. One uh, follow-up question to the views. Um, the view corridor, where does that stem from? Is that language it, that comes from this development as an association, or is this something that is, um, where does the, where's the language for the view corridor stem from? The, 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 the height? View, view corridor. Oh, the no, view, how, no, the view is part of the, part of the uh, ordinance that requires that, that those are the elements that the board has to review to make sure that um, not impacted. Okay. It's not a quarter. It's a quarter. Right? No. Eight. No. Um, the building is um, 81 feet from the end of the proposed addition garage to the end of the existing residence. It's 22 feet wide at this point, 24 feet wide at this point. Um, How wide is the addition there on the left side of the structure? Eight feet. Eight, eight feet, feet by 24. Yes. Uh, th that was my point exactly, what Mr. Smith said was, I just want to see the, the, the overall impact of this from a view standpoint, since that is one of our uh, uh, conditions that must be met. And do you have an idea of the, the roof ridge height? Did you? I believe that this is uh, two feet under the 35 foot maximum to this point here. Is that the same from? And this is about, about a foot and a half to two feet lower than this point. And it is the peak over the garage, that's the same height as the roof ridge across the, the width of the house, is that correct? The is peak. that peak the same as the roof ridge going from left to right? No, no the, no, the, roof, no. the roof ridge behind. No, that. no, it's not, it's lower. Uh, this is higher. I didn't know if it was perspective that made it look. Uh, well, this is, this is a, a front on elevation, which is, which is true. And, uh, you know, this is going to be higher than this ridge line. Am I correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And then this actually is lower. This ridge line is lower than this ridge line. So the 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 left hand ridge line. What would you estimate that height to be from the front ground? Just to give me an idea. Uh, I would say probably thirty at the highest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, It's not, uh, the, the square footage and the volume that, uh, that must be met, the requirements that must be met are not actually part of our uh, decision process this evening, uh, as long as they are kept under the 30% expansion. But I would like to know, just for my own clarification, these figures that the square foot, uh, first of all, the square footage figures. Are these uh, the, of which were referenced in your 
uh, cover letter of 1,728 square feet. Is that the existing square footage of the footprint today based on your calculations? Is that correct? The or is that only the square footage that you estimated within the 75-foot setback line that you demonstrated on your drawing? That's, that's my question. Is what it, because the, uh, the ordinance specifies the expansion within the 75-foot foot setback, yet you seem to indicate, or the, the letter from Solstice uh, Company, Design Company, right. uh, indicates that it's the total existing. It, please clarify that for me. Uh, the 1728, 1,728 square feet is the amount of square footage, the area within the 75-foot setback. Did you establish those that the, the 1728 was, uh, as I said, we researched the files, the file that Ken Curtis, Governor Curtis, uh, the numbers that he prepared, that's where we started from. And we, that, that actual number we confirmed was correct. The cubic foot figure that was in that file, we determined was incorrect. Um, the 13,824, because the previous applicant used an eight foot ceiling. Um, and we refined that uh, to, a, to a, a lesser number, to a lesser number. Uh, he just used an eight-foot height of ceiling throughout the house, and we actually refined that to, to what the actual conditions were. Um, but we're still coming up with, um, using the most conservative number, we're still coming up with a percentage which is gr less than 30 percent maximum. The Again, let me point out, our, our, uh, our obligation this evening is not to verify your numbers and to verify the square footage expansion and the volume expansion. That's, that is for the code enforcement officer to do. Right. What, what I want us to be careful that, uh, that we don't approve this um, application and then, in retrospect, find out the expansion is indeed more than the 30 percent. I, I, and again, I'm not trying to verify these numbers. Uh, I just don't want us to be caught in approving an expansion based on the 50 yeah. percent uh, increase in cost, and then later find out. And, and I, uh, as long as these numbers make sense to the code enforcement officer and to all parties involved, that's fine. But. I guess the, the uh, item that is uh, uh, questionable to me, not questionable in, in the sense that I, uh, 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 of, the, of what's happening, but that you're adding a whole second floor mm -hmm. and at the same time you're only increasing the volume by 26 percent, uh, cube of volume, for example. And I just want to uh, uh, make sure that you know, if, if, and again, I think it needs to be very carefully looked at, uh, at volume. Are you looking at GLA, gross living area, or, uh, you know, footprint, or garage, and things of this nature? And I just want you to be, and the applicant to be very careful that we aren't caught in approving an application with a volume expansion that might exceed 30%. Right. That, that's, that's my concern. Yeah. Uh, and well, and since we are adding, you are adding a whole second floor, uh, the area within the 75 foot, I mean, just from a quick pass without running the numbers, looks like it'd almost be a double, and, and, and instead of the 26 percent. That's that's my comment. Well, actually, I thought I have on those figures there. I believe there's a daylight basement. Is there not? There what? There is. There is a daylight basement, which would already be living space. So it's actually, if you add a whole second floor to a two-story structure, um, 
you're looking at about a third of an increase. So that might be, that might have a big impact on the numbers. This photograph here, that's the rear elevation photograph. Right. And that's the rear elevation, which is, as you can see, it's a three-story. So it's already, there's already two living spaces above, and you're already counting that, so that's not an expense. And I can tell the board that we spent a great deal of time refining these numbers, looking at the files, the previous files, working with Bruce. And we feel, other than the couple of errors I mentioned during my presentation, we feel confident that these numbers and the methodology that we used is correct. That's fine. Again, I'm not concerned about your numbers. I just won't, I just don't want the numbers to slip through while we're passing another, voting on another issue based on your numbers. And it appears that these numbers were provided by Solstice Design. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. John, I just have a question for you on the cover letter where it talks about square feet. And I'm probably just reading this wrong and just picking up an improper interpretation of it. But it talks about in 1999, the previous owner added to the residence enlarging square footage within the high water setback from 1728 to 2066. Then you say the next sentence, the square footage calculation appears to be accurate. And you go on to say the proposed reconstruction would increase the square footage to 2059, an increase of 16%. Which should be 19.2. That was one of the corrections that I... Right. But my question is, aren't we starting with 2066 and we're going to 2059? I noticed that same issue. That was another question that I had regarding... Well, I might add more confusion to it. But I thought the 30% figure was the original from the total lifespan of the property. So... You can't increase more than 30 from the original. So I think the base, the point of basis is the 1728, the pre-1999 figure. That's how I interpret it. Is that, is that the reason it's that way, John? Yes. But I think your point's well taken on the, on your cover letter, page two. The proposed reconstruction would increase the square footage to 2059.8. And on the previous page, the bottom of the previous page, it had already been enlarged to 2066. So I'm... So are you reducing the square footage in that area? Do you see what we're referring to? Actually, yes. Okay. The deck. The, the Governor Curtis's, Governor Curtis's calculations, we found this in his file. He included this patio area right here. That patio is being deleted. And they're going to build a deck or decrease the size of the deck, right? Yes. Decrease the size of the deck. And that's what it was. It was the decreased size of the deck area, which Ken Curtis initially encountered as part of his square footage in his application. This is going to be decreased. Therefore, that's, that's why this has gone down. And the square footage is not increasing at all during, in that area? Because right now it's a two-structure building and it's going to continue to be a two-structure building? It's not being increased within the 75-foot setback. So you're adding a second deck and you're counting that in the square footage, but because the first deck is also being reduced, then, then it's a net decrease. Correct. Yes. The, regarding the cobblestone drive, are you counting that as impervious ground cover? I'm sorry? The cobblestone drive, you are figuring that as part of the impervious ground cover? Yes, we are. Impervious surface, yes. And so the, 
reduction in the so those numbers are actually not figured in in your square footage calculation i guess is that correct no they're because they're outside the 75 on the impervious surface okay. well that that wouldn't matter uh does impervious ground cover mr smith excuse me the impervious ground cover does that calculate outside of the 75 feet no that's the 20 percent is within 250 feet which would be the whole lot within the 250 feet right. so that is counted then the impervious ground cover issue is in the impervious surface right. paragraph it is but not in the square footage square footage only applies to structure. the structure within the 75 foot setback right. so, so what you're saying is, is that the, the, the reduction of the paved of the paved driveway even though coupled with an increase of the of size of the garage, nonetheless results in a, in a, uh, a diminution of total impervious ground. Correct. Yes. We, we deleted uh, a portion of the, the existing driveway <coughs> as well as um, there are the, the walkways leading to the front door currently are much longer than the proposed walkway. Yeah, right here. So the deletion of the driveway and the deletion of a portion of the walkway, um, we were able to add this amount of square footage and this amount of square footage. Mr. Smith, this question for you. Uh, what is, is there a standard for our review of the impact on views? Is there any percentage or impact. guidelines we are to follow either in the statute or in for impact the on views? And, and, you know, what's the level of impact before it's um, you take before testimony it's from from anybody that, that is willing to give it and you it's probably it could be subjective, but you have to determine whether it indeed impacts to an extent that what is there a language in the ordinance that no that raises the issue and where does the view impact come from oh that that the, the, the view impact is in there but there's no language explaining how you review it what, what's the section that's 19 1944 It's not 1944, it's... <laughs> Bruce, in 1944... Oh, it's here somewhere. In 1944, third sentence from the last, visual and actual points of public access to waters. But that's the only thing that has anything to do with view. No, it's in here. Um, it's under 1944B. Um, Two, where it says relocation, it refers under reconstruction replacement. It refers back to relocation. Um, the zoning board appeals shall consider the size of the lot, the slope of the land, potential for soil erosion, and 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 so on. That's came from that paragraph. I'm sorry. Say that again. 1942 relocation. 19 1944B. Three under reconstruction replacement. The bottom paragraph it says determine whether the building reconstruction or replacement meets the water setback to the greatest practical extent. The zoning board of appeals shall consider, in addition to the criteria in section 1944B2, 
which is location, which lists these items. And they also should be able to finish the, the physical condition type of foundation. So on page 40, second paragraph of relocation, you'll find the standards to justify that the board needs to look at. Get that? <laughs> So in the application, there's an aerial photograph that also has delineations for where the view corridors are. Where did those come from? Who we, put we prepared those. Yep. And how did you determine what those are? Is that part of, I guess, the bylaws of some type of association? No, no. These are, uh, these are actual, these are not recorded view easements, you know, on, as part of the deeds of these properties. I created these oh, so just by line of sight. Line of by line of sight, yeah. correct. Is it your intention to replace the uh, entire septic system? There was a note made in your notes that the right. tank was replaced in 1987, I believe. Is it your intention to replace the tank and the leach field entire no, it system? It is not. Okay. Under sure, we'll have to talk about that. But under shoreland zone, if you're going to replace the building, the new, the new, the latest code says you got to replace a septic. So, oh, I, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, no, okay. no, you weren't. Like, All right. In the last two years, they've changed that. So it will be required to be replaced. Okay. The septic system, yes. The septic the system. The tank, if it's okay, will <clears throat> stay. Okay. Mm. While we're on that subject, can you go back to that initial chart you had with the triangle showing the yes. 75 foot, and then the setbacks to the left of the garage, and then you have the septic sitting outside of the setbacks or the proposed septic or disposal area? Is that normal to go outside the setback? Yeah, it doesn't need that, to be in the building. It doesn't need no. to be. It's got to be 10 feet from a property line. That's okay. With, was that answered? Yes, it is. With my question in mind, uh, uh, with the understanding that the septic will need to be replaced, with the proposed location, uh, I believe, uh, and Mr. Smith can comment on this, that there's a 20-foot required setback from the foundation to the nearest edge of the septic system. Do you meet that 20-foot setback from the septic system, and will that permit you to enlarge into that area? Is a 20-foot setback from the edge of the, the, the septic the system, leach field, or any portion of to the foundation is required to be placed? That's a 10-foot setback. Yeah, the, the, that's correct. There is a 20-foot setback, but if you were replacing an existing septic system, to a foundation through my office you can get a variance down to 10 feet okay now the question is always raised is if you got the septic system in and you're creating an addition can you still have that 10 foot setback it's always been a gray area in the, in the septic code that's your issue what i'm asking is in view of the fact if we grant the expansion eight foot and and what is that a two foot forward expansion on that corner on the front yes about two feet if we grant that expansion are we precluding you from putting in a new septic system which is apparently indeed and required that that's the that's the motive for my question i see <clears throat> uh, well I, I guess from what i'm hearing we would be required to get a variance on the setback Right, and that must have been, who was it, Frick? That, that, Al Frick. That, that must have been his thinking that, that a variance could be granted down to 10 feet, um, which is not uncommon for existing. Do, do, we don't need to get involved in that no. at all. I just wanted to make sure that, yeah, right. that we didn't approve something that couldn't be done from a technical on the ground standpoint. Right. If there's a feasible alternative to get that, that distance to 20 feet or even further than than then I'd require that, and I'd probably question Al as to could he pull closer, but um, 
if there's no to the property line if there's no other alternative though the ten feet would would be ok any other questions yeah, John, does, uh, how, do, how's, how does the elevation go from the front of this house to the property across the street and the property to the left across the street. In other words, does the, do the houses on the other side of the street sit higher than the subject house? Uh, I'm going by memory here. Uh, this, this house, I'm almost sure, sits higher. Um, you, you can see the contours coming around, wrapping around like this. Um, so th this, this house sits higher. Probably, I would, I would guess, two, two to three feet mm -hmm. higher than this one here. You mean higher than existing? Higher than the existing okay. residence, correct. Miss um, Osborne's house, uh, you can see the contours. It's pretty, pretty level across here, as well as to Mr. Toy's house. And what about the house to the left of the house across the street? That is higher than this house. By the same Ms. amount, three, four feet? Is that correct? Well, oh, it is it is higher, yeah. 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 The, the views this this residence and Mr. Hanley's residence, their water views are in this direction here, the opposite direction of this. They're looking out over Smuggler's Cove. On that aerial photograph, where is the subject property? It is right here. Any other questions by board members? Is the eight foot addition that's going to be a slab? Uh, that should be a fourth foundation. So you're going to excavate a foundation for each feet? Yeah. Question? Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you. Do the board members have any other uh, questions for the other party involved with the, the construction? Questions of the applicant? Yeah. Yeah, John, just a couple more questions. Oh, you, you the, do. The, with, uh, okay. The widow's nest, I guess, for lack of, is that what you call it, the observatory on the front of the house? Is that functional or is that just uh, aesthetic? It's a functional widow's nest. The first floor is actually a stairway. It, it, excuse me. We, if you're going to comment, we need you to approach the podium, introduce yourself. Uh, sure. If Mr. Mitchell can answer that. Yeah. I'm Graham Pillsbury. Um, the first floor will be a, a uh, turning staircase. The second floor will be an open open uh, cathedral ceiling, and then the third floor will be like a conservation uh, deck. Yeah. And it's circular all the way around, observation 360 Correct. degrees. Correct, yep. Would you please repeat your name and address for the record? Uh, my name is Graham Pillsbury, and I live at uh, 76 Two Lights Road, Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. And your capacity for the records in this is? Construction manager. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll open the floor to
comments from the public. If there are any supportive comments, will you please come to the podium, introduce yourself. Hearing none, are there any comments from the audience uh, in opposition to the project? Thank you, hearing none. We'll close the uh, public forum aspect of the meeting and open it for board discussion. I just have a, a question uh, for, for Bruce. As far as the 75 foot uh, line, I mean, it seems to be key in establishing all that. The plan refers to um, number five, which is a plan of property made for Kenneth Curtis dated 1998 by Titcomb Associates. Is that, is that acceptable? Or can we be sure that that's the correct line determined at that time? Well, we were accepting that as, as part of this application. Yes, that, that was established uh, and we've been carrying that through. I believe there are eight elements uh, in the ordinance states that the building meets a setback to the greatest practical extent due to the following. Um, in lieu of voting on each of those eight elements, I'd like to just have a discussion on those if we could. Uh, an obvious factor in this proposal is the size of the lot, that being less than 15,000 square feet. Or, 14,000, according to the survey, 14,000 hundred uh, precludes uh, a major relocation of the prop of the construction on the lot. Uh, some modifications could be made uh, with both positive and negative impact on the, the, the view uh, of the structure. Uh, the slope of the land, the construction will be minimally involved in the slope of the land. Uh, the potential for soil erosion uh, as the plans for the preservation of the uh, or the prevention of soil erosion has been extensively outlined in the uh, attachment to the application. Uh, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties. Uh, the one thing that stood out in my mind, and I want to make sure this is clear for the uh, uh, records, is it was stated in the in the attachment to the application that the front setback was 20 feet. With, in actuality, the front setback is 25 feet. Uh, it can be reduced to 20 feet based on the average setback of the two nearest properties, which in this case would be uh, the toy of property to the east and, and uh, number 16 Smuggler's Cove to the west. Uh, the average of those two uh, uh, according to the survey, is less than 25 feet or in the 21-foot area. So that explains the reduction of the front setback from 25 feet to 21 feet, uh, not to 20 feet, but it's, uh, the, the ordinance doesn't state 20 feet, it states 25, but I just would like that clarification that that's based on the two adjacent nearest property. Um, location of the septic, apparently it must be replaced and, and the design indicates that, that there is an acceptable location in the front. I think the impact of views is, is uh, a relevant uh, issue with the expansion and uh, the view corridors, although Cape Elizabeth does not have a view easement, uh, designation it becomes somewhat subjective as to the impact of the views seeing that there's no opposition in the audience uh, or any other comments <coughs> with regard to the views it's my observation that the impact on the views will indeed be minimal uh, 
amount of vegetation removed uh, appears to be minimal. There will, as with any construction site, there will be extensive disruption of the, of the, of the ground. And I assume that based on the comments and, and uh, that uh, in the attachment of the application that there will be, uh, that will be uh, observed and taken care of quite rapidly if there's any uh, disruption of, of which it's my experience there'll be significant re disruption of the existing ground cover as there is with any construction. Uh, uh, it was stated that the physical condition and type of the foundation is, is good uh, in this. Board, if there are any comments regarding any of these points, uh, I think we should discuss them now. I have one regarding the impact on views. Um, the surrounding neighbors, those likely to be impacted by the change to their view, were all sent um, via U.S. Postal a letter, right? They would send a notice of searing, yes. Are those seasonal homes or year-round homes? I don't know. Year-round. Year-round. Typically, do you, uh, it, it's, do you know how many letters were sent out? Can you estimate? It's a significant area, is it? Is it well, it's anybody within 1,000 feet of the nearest 25, whichever is uh, whichever's less. So at least 25 of yeah. the nearest household, if not more, within 1,000 foot I don't radio. know whether the, the applicant did their homework and talked to the neighbors, but I didn't have any calls except for <coughs> one who was just interested I didn't hear from anybody else either way. Uh, uh, Mr. Mitchell, have you, uh, you would, since the owners or the applicants are not present, would you have, I assume you would have heard if there was any discussion uh, re regarding the construction since this letter was sent out, you would have contacted possibly the, the, the owners of the property. Are you aware of any comments at all? No. Uh, Positive or negative? I can say that I, I personally uh, visited uh, Paul Hanley and Leah Osborne. Uh, Paul lives in the house across from the subject property. Leah lives in the adjacent property here. Um, I visited uh, Mark Heltoff, who lives in the next home, gave him the same presentation, the same spiel, um, and uh, explained to Leah that a portion of her view is going to be a very thin slice will be impacted, um, and there really weren't any negative comments. It is. It was well advertised by the town, and as long as you know of no other comments uh, from neighbors, that's okay. notable. Any other comments on the board from the board regarding these eight points? Mr. Smith, would you like us to vote on each one of these conditions, or is it acceptable to vote on the overall? Unless somebody has a particular issue with one, I think it would be appropriate to vote on. That's why I reviewed each lot. of them to see if there was any uh, uh, anyone particular that anyone would like to bring up individually and instead of a group. Good. Uh, may I have a motion? Would someone like to offer a motion? I'll be happy to do that if someone well, uh, would you like to? I'll take a stab at it. Yeah. Good. Um, I'd like to move that uh, the application for a request of uh, William Turner and Prissa Strong use the same language of the uh, tax map U10 lot 42. Uh, for purposes of replacing and enlarging an existing dwelling within the 75-foot high water mark of the Atlantic Ocean uh, be granted. Um, upon, I think that says, I think the, my only question is the 
sewage disposal system and that has its own set of requirements that have to be met uh, through your office, so that shouldn't be tied into this motion? No. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second the motion. All those in favor? Any opposed? Hearing none, application Thank approved. You Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your presentation. Next item on the agenda is communications, and I have a few here I'd like to discuss with the board. Uh, first item of communication on January 26th, the town of Cape Elizabeth hosted a board and commission orientation meeting and dinner at the middle school auditorium. Uh, I think several of the board members were in attendance, as was town council members and other representatives of, of all the boards and commissions of the town. Uh, like uh, it was, uh, I think uh, this is the second year I've been in attendance, and I think it was a helpful uh, orientation meeting to tie together all of the town uh, plans and boards and, and meetings. It was uh, led by Deborah Lane and uh, Michael McGovern, the uh, town manager and, and town clerk. I'd like to thank the town for hosting the, that event. Um, I received a memo from Michael McGovern regarding the 2005 Comprehensive Plan Committee. Uh, the town council at their February 14th meeting uh, approve the establishment of a comprehensive plan committee and it, the, the purpose of this is intended, the committee is, or the comprehensive plan is intended to, to guide the growth and the development uh, of our community. The, this has up, been updated every 10 years or thereabouts since the early 1970. The last update was in 93, 1993. The, uh, Michael McGovern is, has requested that a committee be established for members of the Town Council Planning Board. Town Council Planning Board, School Board, Conservation Commission, and Zoning Board, as well as members from the community at large to establish an 11-member board. They're requesting that the Zoning Board of Appeals designate a representative. Um, I spoke with Maureen Amira, the town planner, who's going to be heading the uh, Comprehensive Plan Committee uh, to find, to get a feel for what was uh, and what the obligations were uh, by a representative. And their plans are to uh, uh, each representative, and in the case of the zoning board, uh, the, the, our designee to the, uh, to the committee will act as a liaison between the Comprehensive Plan Committee and the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, and as a conduit of information to the committee and, and back to the board, to report back to the board. Uh, they anticipate that the meeting extent of this comprehensive plan committee will be in the neighborhood of 18 months. Uh, they're initially planning 
meetings monthly, uh, two hours each meeting, and it would be in the evening. And toward the end, depending on how much of the plan has been completed, the, uh, it, it could go to several meetings per month. So the, uh, it, it appears it will be quite an intensive pro process with an ex extensive dedication of a significant amount of time. Uh, we are to, I am to, uh, the zoning board is to have one representative sit on that committee. Uh, if there's anyone interested in, uh, uh, in this process or being on the committee, if you'll contact me after the meeting and we'll see if there's any interest. Uh, third item, uh, I received a uh, mailer from the Maine Municipal Association regarding a local use workshop. It's a, it's a basic workshop as described. Uh, there's a meeting in Cumberland, uh, the city of Cumberland in March, uh, one in Augusta in April, and they're evidently throughout the years. If any, the meetings are in the evening, it's a one-time meeting. If any board members are attending, uh, interested in attending that, I have the information regarding the application. Uh, and the last item that I have is uh, uh, regarding the nomenclature of our officers. Uh, that currently, our rules and regulations state that uh, we have a chairman and a secretary. It's my feeling that uh, the term secretary is, is a bit of an outdated term. We have an excellent recording secretary, and in reality, the zoning board secretary is is indeed in fact a, a vice chairman uh, other boards use the term chairman and vice chairman i i would like to suggest that we change the name of secretary of the zoning board uh, from secretary to a vice chairman to more accurately reflect uh, the true job description of that uh, and if there are any comments i'd like to have that at this time uh, I move a motion. Like a motion that we change the name of secretary to vice chairman, made by Mr. Galino, a second. I'll second. All those in favor? All in favor of zero opposed. Uh, we'll draft a letter and submit that to the town council for their blessing. I think it's a proper procedure to, to have that name changed so that. Uh, that can be reflected in, in our rules and regulations and sanctioned by the town council. Do you, want, next, do you want to do that letter or do you want me to? Please. You. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a question. <laughs> so just for point of clarification, we're changing the name of the position. You look at me person. when he says will, so. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for <laughs> handling that <laughs> bit of paperwork. Uh, our next meeting is March 22nd. Any other items? I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, gentlemen.